What up, everybody? Welcome back to the ATG. I'm your newly discovered commentary channel, Mikotsky. I look a mess today because I feel a mess today. The future is bleak, and it turns out that our past wasn't that great either. If you were a child of the late 90s or early 2000s, there's a very high chance that you grew up on 500 milligrams of Nickelodeon per day. Nickelodeon was the spot for kids back in the day. We had our own Oscars, for God's sakes. Nickelodeon was an absolute juggernaut in kids' television. They were easily able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and even sometimes outperform the Disney Channel. And now, 20-some years later, a documentary has released by the name of Quiet On Set, which exposes just how dark this period of television history was for everyone that was working on these shows, especially the kids. And all of this darkness revolves around one man, Dan Schneider. I'm going to do my best not to just regurgitate the documentary to you in this video because I really do think that everyone needs to go watch this documentary. But I do have to warn you, it deals with some very, very dark topics like essay of child actors and if anyone has gone through something like that or you just can't stomach the subject i understand that there's some people that are just not going to be able to engage with this documentary but for everyone else in my opinion i think it should be kind of a little bit of an obligation for us to watch this documentary these kids uh went through absolute hell to bring us these shows and these shows are something i would consider some of the fondest memories of our childhood. So I think that the least that you and I can do is watch this documentary and to hear their stories and to know their stories. I mean, what went down just needs to be known by as many people as possible. It's just as simple as that. Dan Schneider is pretty much responsible for any show that you can think of from this time period. All that, Kenan and Kel, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, I mean, everything, all of it, iCarly, all of it traces back to Dan Schneider. And it uh, turns out he was a really bad dude, like a really, really bad dude, like Harvey Weinstein bad. But I do have to clarify, there was never any evidence that was found that Dan Schneider physically assaulted anyone. However, he was extremely abusive in other ways, verbally, emotionally, very, very manipulative dude, and he just treated everyone on set badly, and he fostered a very unsafe environment, especially for the child actors involved in these shows. Because he was just producing hit after hit, Nickelodeon pretty much gave him more power than he should have had, and he just knew how to manipulate that power to his will, and he was just basically unchecked for a very long time. This man is as gross as he looks. And look, I do not support bullying or body shaming. I don't support that stuff. I think that's a very low thing to do. But in Dan Schneider's case, I'm going to make an exception. He can absolutely get the smoke. This is a very bad dude. This is not somebody that you need to feel sorry for in any way, shape, or form. He made his employees and actors' lives hell for years and years and years. He overworked and underpaid his female staff. He made two female writers share one salary, which was a very illegal thing to do. He also would ask people to massage him on set all the time, and it was usually a female employee. It wasn't like a sexual massage, but like still, like that's a weird thing to ask any co-worker to do like if your boss was just like hey come into my office and give me a massage even if it's like a normal massage that's that's weird that's a weird thing to ask for and clearly just like a power move you're telling me this guy doesn't respect woman i'm shocked he overworked the child actors and ignored child labor laws time and time again. And not only did he overwork the actors, but he heavily sexualized them on camera too in very subtle and underhanded ways that now looking back, it's it's so gross. Uh, heavy emphasis on feet. He, he was infamously a, a feet guy, which, you know, no kink shaming, but uh, when children are involved, all the kink shaming. I mean, he... He did some really weird stuff that made it to the air. I mean, a group of adults watched these things and they were like, yep, that's that's good to go. We're going to air that. And I'd love to show you examples of what I'm talking about, but it's I'm not gonna because it's just uncomfortable. 
it's really gross. It's really gross stuff. And, uh, yeah, you're just going to have to watch the documentary. There's no direct accusations of racism against Dan Schneider, but there is enough testimony from uh, black actors, and there's enough evidence to support that he definitely favored the white cast and uh, the white kids, and he treated them very differently uh, than he would the black kids. And the black kids actually got kicked off of the show a lot more than the white kids did. So, like, he's a fucking racist. You know, it's 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 pretty obvious, I, I guess, allegedly, because there was never any direct accusation, but it's like, it's it's pretty obvious that he's also probably very racist. And look, I could go on and on and on with all of the terrible things that happened. I mean, we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg yet. We're not even at the iceberg. We're on a boat on our way to the iceberg still. It's just astounding just how many bad things happened on these sets time and time again and just how long Dan Schneider went unchecked. It's just, it's really unbelievable. He is directly responsible for why many of these kids ended up growing up with heavy uh, mental illness issues and addiction issues like Amanda Bynes. Dan Schneider is, I would say, very heavily responsible for why Amanda Bynes went from superstardom to now looking like someone who has dealt with an extreme amount of trauma. There's just like this vacant look in her eyes now, and yet it communicates just a lot of pain. There's just a lot of pain behind those eyes, and we still don't really know what fully ha happened to Amanda Bynes, and I, I do hope that she finds the courage to tell her side of the story one day, because we really still don't know her side of the story. We don't know exactly what happened to Amanda Bynes. Whatever they did to Amanda is unforgivable because she was destined for greatness. One of my favorite Amanda Bynes skits is The Procrastinator. Procrastinator. Two people are here to see you. They say it's an emergency. Can't they come back later? Maybe tomorrow, next week or something? <laughs> and it's like this superhero that just procrastinates a lot. <laughs> And that really resonated with me because I grew up with undiagnosed ADHD for most of my life. So I've, I've lived a life of procrastination. And so the notion of this character just made me laugh so much because, you know, I'm watching this and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm capable of, of great things, too. And I, too, will do good things for the world. Eventually. I am so sorry for what Amanda Bynes has gone through and I just I hope that she finds the strength and courage one day to speak on her side of the story because if there's any missing pieces that could like bring these people down and bring them to justice then it needs to be said but you know it's her story it's uh it's her choice to do that or not and if you think all of this is really bad about Dan Schneider oh my sweet summer child it gets worse and worse this is the worst story of the whole ordeal, at least as far as we know. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a trigger warning here. We're about to get into some really heavy and dark stuff. So just for the next few minutes or perhaps the remainder of the video, just trigger warning. It's where it's going to be dark. The absolute worst thing that Dan Schneider ever did was to allow child predators to work on his sets and in close proximity to children. Now, I'm not saying that Dan Schneider purposefully hired child predators. I think this is more of a case of extreme negligence. There was not enough due diligence done in the hiring process, and there was not enough precautions taken on set uh, to put safety measures in place to keep the children safe. And because of this extreme negligence, I believe that all of these child predators were successful in their predation. And we're not talking about like isolated incidents. This was a repetitious problem. One of these guys had <sighs> shrines for his victims in Ziploc bags that were found in his house when he was finally arrested, along with a lot of other just unspeakable stuff. But what I'm trying to say is like, <sighs> these were like prolific predators. Like these were bad 
bad people. And the worst predator among them was somebody named Brian Peck. You might remember him as Pickle Boy. If you stay and do all that, you'll never have to go to school again. <laughs> and you'll get all the pickles you can eat. Pickle Boy, turns out, is a absolute monster. Brian Peck abused Drake Bell of Drake and Josh numerous times. And they share, like, some of the specifics of what happened, and it's just, it's vile and, and just really sad and really dark stuff. And again, this wasn't an isolated incident. This happened uh, repeatedly. And this is not a matter of speculation either, because Brian Peck was actually arrested for this, and he pled guilty no contest during the trial uh when drake showed up brian peck's entire side of the courtroom was filled with like celebrities and support for brian peck and drake was absolutely just shocked by it on the day of sentencing for brian i get to the courthouse it was the most unbelievable thing i'd ever seen his entire side of the courtroom was full Full. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. Numerous celebrities even took the time to write character letters to the judge in defense of Brian Peck. Since then, like now that all this is coming out, a lot of those celebrities are kind of walking it back and just being like, we didn't know exactly what went down or how bad the accusations were or like exactly specifically what happened. And a lot of them have uh, disavowed any support for Brian Peck since then. And like... I guess we'll have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I, I have a hard time doing that, and Drake Bell definitely had a hard time doing that as well. I looked at all of them, and I just said, how dare you? And I said, you will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person, and I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me and doing unspeakable acts and crimes and that's what i'll remember for fairness i do have to mention that there were recent allegations against drake bell as well for sending inappropriate messages and images to a minor and so drake bell is kind of a interesting case because i do have a huge amount of empathy because i i can't even imagine going through like the horrors that he was put through and, and how it must affect him to this day. But I also think that if there was any anything really bad that he did, that he should be held accountable for that because actions have consequences. It would seem from the documentary that he is doing his best to take accountability for any wrongdoing on his part. So that's good to see. But regardless of that incident, nobody should have to even worry about going through something like that. Like, no one should ever have to endure something like that. It's just, it's so vile, you know? What's more shocking is you might think that Drake caught this person's eye when Drake and Josh was at its peak popularity, but this abuse actually took place before episode one had even filmed. And Drake and Josh is a very beloved childhood show for my generation. I mean, it was massively massively popular these characters were massively massively popular and for drake to have gone through something so vicious and still come on to set and give the performance that he did on every single episode is honestly nothing short of astounding and i i think that i mean he he says it himself in the documentary i think he poured so much into that show and that character because it was quite literally his escape. Editor Mickey here. I totally forgot to uh, record this part. Uh, just in case Brian Peck doesn't sound like enough of a, a piece of shit, he also was pen pals with John Wayne Gacy. Yes, that John Wayne Gacy. He was pen pals with him. John Wayne Gacy actually uh, did a self-portrait painting of himself and sent it to Brian Peck, and Brian Peck was very proud of this painting. He would it hung up in his living room and people would come over and he would like 
openly and, and proudly talk about this and kind of be proud about the fact that he was pen pals with John Wayne Gacy. So, you know, just uh, ju just in case you weren't fully on board, um, there's that. I know this has been a pretty heavy video, so here's a little moment of respite. Let's take a pause and a breather. Ah, <sighs> okay, break over. Now strap in because it, it still gets worse. This story still gets worse. For all of the horrible things that Brian Peck did to Drake Bell, he was only sentenced to 16 months in prison. Less than a year and a half. All of that celebrity support and those character letters must have worked because, um, what in the actual f*** is this sentence? The judge had eyewitness testimony and paperwork in front of him that very graphically in, in high detail said specifically all of the things that happened to Drake Bell. Brian Peck was even like, yeah, I'm not even going to argue I did it. And somehow the judge was still like, well, this does seem to be like your first offense. So yeah, I think a year and a half ought to do it. Yeah, I think I hear, I think a year and a half ought to do it and just don't do it again. Brian Peck basically walked away with a slap on the wrist for doing one of the most heinous things a human being can do to uh, another human being, a child, he, uh, to a child. And this story still gets worse. I am, I'm so sorry to do this to you today. You would think that, okay, fine, he went to jail for not enough long of a period, but surely his life is over. Surely no one's going to work with this guy again. Surely he's just going to be a loser. Uh, no, he was hired by Disney almost immediately to work on more shows, to be in close proximity to children again. And Disney eventually did fire him, and they claimed that they didn't know. But um, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna press X for doubt on that. Here's the thing: Hollywood is not a very big place. It's a very small place, and a lot of professionals hop around between different teams, and everyone kind of knows each other. Okay, if there's something happening on one set, the other set is surely to know. News travels fast. Everyone knows each other. So for somebody to claim that they didn't know about a heinous crime like this, like this story would have traveled so fast and everybody in Hollywood would have known about it. So for them to be like, we didn't know, I'm sorry. I'm going to call bullshit on that. There's no way that you didn't know. And do you remember those two women that I mentioned earlier that were sharing a salary? Well, they both quit and one of them decided to sue Dan Schneider and she won. They, they settled out of court for that. But here's the thing. She lost her career because no one wanted to work with her again. She gave up her career in order to call out these injustices and she lost everything in order to do that. And, again, and nothing changed, by the way. Bad stuff still kept happening for years, even after she called all that stuff out. So a woman that is fighting for inequality and calling out these injustices gets blacklisted from Hollywood, but a literal convicted child predator is able to move on to fuck Disney after coming out of prison. Yeah, dude. Tell me about how equal men and women have it in the workplace. Tell me more about that. This case needs to be revisited and everyone involved needs to be investigated, including that judge. I can only hope that uh, they're not working anymore because w what? I will never understand how Brian Peck walks away with a 1.4 year prison sentence. Uh, he probably got out early too on some good behavior bullshit. I don't know. You'll have to fact check me on that, but like but not long enough. He didn't spend long enough rotting in that cell. In my opinion, he should be in prison for life. He should he should not have any more opportunities. He should be rotting in a prison cell somewhere. These are the key bad things that happened during the Schneider era, but trust me, there is so much more that went down. Just go watch the documentary. Please go watch the documentary because it's like, I, I think it's hugely important to watch and know about. These people, at the very least, deserve to have their voices heard and their stories known. Eventually, Nickelodeon did wisen up and they fired Dan Schneider, but it was too little too late. I mean, there, there 
was years and years of trauma and abuse that had already taken place. So even though they did get rid of him eventually, it was a too little, too late situation. And then Dan just kind of disappeared into obscurity until recently when he was, I guess, forced to respond to all of these allegations and the documentary coming out. And he did so uh, in a in a very bizarre interview. Dan's response is got to be one of the most awful attempts at trying to save face that I've seen so far. I think Colleen Ballinger still takes the cake with uh, the ukulele apology, but this one comes pretty close. But here's the thing. At least this is a coherent interview where a conversation is being had and Dan is sort of addressing stuff and sort of apologizing, but not really at all either. Hey, editor Mickey again. I just watched the Dan Schneider interview again. I just sat through it again and I just... I don't think I made it clear how bad this interview is and how bad the interviewer is. Uh, it's the way it's shot, the way it's edited, the way the set is dressed. It almost feels like one of Dan Schneider's shows. It's so obviously scripted. It's so bad. It is so bad. It is such a terrible attempt at trying to save face. The clearest thing about it is the the amount of editing and the amount of cuts I, it, sometimes it doesn't even feel like they're in the same room because of the way it's cut and shot it is so obviously scripted and this was so obviously just a puff piece and i don't know who this tebow dude is but he was clearly paid to do this or maybe he's got things to hide himself and maybe maybe people should be looking into Tebow a little bit more because there's just not only is he asking Dan softball questions but he's also glazing him up every opportunity he gets like this was Dan's attempt to just make himself look like a victim and it's so disrespectfully obvious it's so bad I I can't wait for more stuff to come out and just see the downfall of this man it's such a disgusting interview i i can't make that uh clear enough this whole interview is about what you would expect from a standard narcissist like dan schneider a lot of fake apologizing a lot of placing blame on others a lot of deflecting and understating the events that took place and a brief fake cry just to really complete the bingo board of narcissistic apologies. You don't have to be a body language expert to see the transparency of this moment. Look how quickly he shifts from normal to crying and then back to normal. But Drake's mom, a lovely woman who I stay in contact with this day, she came to me at the time and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And... Would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course. And I did. And he ended up going to prison and serving his time. And, yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career. For as much time as you spent with actors, you're really bad at it. And the best part is he uploaded this interview to his own channel. Yeah, man, that doesn't read like controlled propaganda at all. What an idiot. And I don't know who the interviewer is, but unfortunately, you've lost all of your credibility. This guy pulled a Karamo during the Pink Sauce saga. You can't play softball with narcissists like Dan Schneider because they will happily tank your reputation along with theirs in any last-ditch effort to try to save face. And Dan... Please grow out your mustache to at least cover one of those Vienna sausages that you call lips. The way your goatee accentuates your disgusting mouth is, quite frankly, hard to look at. Why did you shave your pubes and super glue them to your chin? You have money, bro. Just go to a barber. You look like shit. Actually, saying you look like shit is disrespectful to shit. You're more like stale air. And the Quiet On Set documentary is like the window that's been opened. Now it's just going to take a little bit of time to air you out, at which point you will truly be nothing. And if you're never brought to proper justice, I can only hope that you spend the remainder of your years sad and alone and hated. 
And that is what my people like to call karma. Screw you, you disgusting, evil excuse for a human being. This one really hurts, because I don't know if I'm going to have kids, but if I do, I had definitely planned on sharing these shows with them, sharing the memories from my childhood with them, and now I feel like I'm not going to do that, because it's just, it's tainted. It's not the same anymore. We can't revisit this era with the same kind of nostalgia and glee, knowing what we know now. It's just... Ah, oh boy, right in the childhood. Okay guys, that's about all I can take. Please like the video and hit the bell to stay notified if you enjoyed this content. And if you want to be a member of the ATG, all you gotta do is hit subscribe to secure your lifetime membership to the most above typical community on the internet. I'm Mikatsky, and I'll see you next time. If you were a child of the late 90s or early 2000s, there's a very... There's a very high chance that... What the fuck was that?